Welcome to Sisters Speak, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. I'm Sister Kay. I'm Will from C-Town. I am Zombie Scotty. I'm Connie from Tulsa. And welcome to episode number 128. Let's get started. Right. Welcome, welcome to the Speak Nation. Look who I have here. Ah, oh, this is going to be so exciting. <laughs> I have some OG family members with me tonight. I we would get love to be called OG. Yes. Wow. That's At awesome. this point, this this year is going to make it's seventeen. It's an honor. It's an honor to have y'all. It's seventeen years. We've been podcasting, so y'all have been with us for a lot of that time. So, yes, I think you are now OGs. Definitely OGs. Much love. Much love. Yes. So before we get into this episode, um, the final episode of The Ones Who Live, I would love to have y'all introduce yourselves and give us a little bit of background about who you are, for those who don't know. And also... Uh, I'd love to hear your history with The Walking Dead. Like, how? when did you start watching? Have you watched all of the spinoffs? How do you like this season so far before we get into this actual final episode? So can we start off with Will? Hi, I'm Will. Uh, I love the post-apocalyptic genre. And so that's kind of why I got into watching The Walking Dead. I came back after living in India for two years and started watching the first season. Um, I found out about Sister Speak through Game of Thrones when I was at the gym and realized that I was out of podcast and looked up Game of Thrones and saw it from a sister's point of view. And I'm like, that's the podcast I want to listen to. <laughs> yes. And you two just killed me. So you and Sister Jay rocked it. And I found out about this podcast later and uh, been listening ever since. Uh, my favorite podcasts of yours, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead and Westworld. Oh, yes. Just my personal favorites. Um, like I said, I love this genre. Uh, a lot of sci-fi, a lot of AI. Um, and I'm just looking forward to chatting with you tonight. And have you watched all of the... Did you, watch, did you finish the whole series, the Walking Dead series, the original series? No, no. I'm going to say, are you allowed to ask us that question? I mean, I'm saying... Yeah. Hey, when you fell off, <laughs> when when you fell off the I couch, thought... I fell off the couch. Oh, okay. I, I've yeah, podcasted yeah. with you in the last mm. season. You, Zombie yes. Scotty, and Ozzy yes. John. Shout out, Ozzy John. Hey, John. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you weren't going to podcast it, it just wasn't that interesting. And all the characters to me, lost their sort of flavor for the most part at the end. And they just sort of spun stuff out and just mm-hmm. lost interest. We lost but all of our core When I heard these were coming back and you're going to podcast, I'm like, come back to that. Yay. Yay. Excellent. I'm glad to have you. Thank you for joining all the way all right. from the UK. So it's late for you. Today yeah, I got to get that long distance shout out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful up here in the north. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Zombie Scotty. Well, I am Sir Zombie Scotty, Lord Commander of the Sisters God. And today I get to add uh, the moniker um, OG Sister Speak uh, participant. So when I get my titles all square, that'll be the latest. Um, <laughs> so look, um, Walking Dead was actually one of my forays back into the world of pop culture. Um, I had a graduate student who gave me the first 60 issues of the comic. I couldn't stop reading them. The show came out. The first three or four seasons absolutely blew me away. Um, My daughter and I were driving from, you guys know Marissa, right? We were driving, and this is like years ago. We're driving from Florida to Cincinnati to go to a wedding of one of my former students. And they said, I want to listen to a podcast, but I don't want to listen to a podcast that sounds like most past casts sound like, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, I looked up The Walking Dead and I saw a sister speak, as Will said, from a sister's point of view. You guys made me laugh for hundreds of miles. And um, <laughs> I wrote him for the first time during Game of Thrones and the rest is history, right? Um, to the point where you guys are my inspiration to do what I'm doing. I'm podcasting right now and uh, trying to recreate the two glass of wine after dinner adult long ass conversation <laughs> that I, I I'll be straight up with you. I think our culture is suffering from sound bites and, you know, high amplitude noise when this is what I like to do. So, um, yeah, 
That's my story. And by the way, when I watched this six episode series, everything felt right. It not mm. only felt right, it felt right that we were watching it now mm. instead of three or four years Back ago. Then. All the time worked. My listening to you guys in the podcast, it's like, okay, yeah, it's been a while. Or as the kids say, it's been a minute, right? Yeah, yeah. And for Rick and Michonne, it's been a minute. And it was just, everything made sense. And it was actually glorious to the point of bawling my ass off at the end of uh, episode yes. six. It was great. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. And what an honor to be your inspiration. Because no, you're yeah, yeah. an amazing um host and no, you're moderator very kind. so thank you very kind and connie sister connie oh we cannot the, hear you you're, you gotta hit that on mute button unmute i know i had to sneeze it's I allergy love you, weather you know what i'm saying <laughs> allergies are bad so i am zombie scott's younger sister i have been into zombies and gore and old movies like that having three older brothers for my whole life and scotty brought me into the sister speak family and we went to our first con which was game of thrones i got to meet everybody and just the love and just the acceptance that i felt was like i need a part of this whenever right. they're going to get together i need to roll too uh so i fell off in the walking dead series I uh, got a little mundane at some point. I just, I thought, well, I'll come back, which I never did. Yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to watch the first five episodes of this six episode season with Scotty up in uh, where he lives up in Chicago area. And that was real nice. And then it was. I, I broke down and went ahead and got me some AMC <laughs> so, I <could> watch, <laughs> so I could watch that last episode. Cause how are you not going to watch the last episode? Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's all I have for you. Well, thank you for being here too. And thank you for helping um, bring this series together with, with everybody yeah. in the Speak family. So this specific episode, well, we can talk about the series as a whole and then also this, but specifically this finale. Um, before we get to the specifics of the finale, how have you thought, I know Zombie Sky, you mentioned you've enjoyed the pacing right. and everything of this season. How about the rest of y'all? Have you enjoyed the storytelling and did it remind you of the old Walking Dead? Were you annoyed? Y'all haven't heard yet, but I was highly annoyed. You could probably know why in episode five when I realized mm. because I too never went back and finished the Walking Dead. I stopped like midway through season 10. I never saw any of the spinoffs. But right. lo and behold, episode five last week, there's Father Gabriel in my face. Yeah, one of yeah. the characters wow. that I could not stand the most from <laughs> when I used to watch it. So that kind of threw me. I was like, this has been a perfect show so far, except for that. So anyway, <laughs> what has your thoughts been about this season so far? I think the pairing, as annoying as it is, of Father Gabriel and... Uh, you know, Anne or whatever you want to call it, whichever moniker you prefer, Jadis, um, Warren Officer, <laughs> is pretty good. I mean, I don't personally like it, but they are so annoying. And the first thing I thought is, oh, this has got to be killing Sister K. It was killing me. Mm. I was hollering. And, <laughs> and uh, luckily I had something to do, so I was able to minimize my engagement. <laughs> <laughs> so you were multitasking. I was multitasking, um, but mm. uh, I had it on two big screens. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had no idea about it. I did do a little research after I watched the finale and saw that Jada's had a big part in season two of some series that I never watched. I mean, <laughs> what I think was great was after Kirkman basically ended the series. Mm. Because he was so clearly so fed up with the decisions that Gimple had made in the show to kill off Carl because yep. they had some contract issue that he's like, this is you are not continuing to basically just create my vision yep. and just cut it right there. And uh, 
And I mean, we talked about it the last time. They got rid of all the interesting characters. And the most interesting yeah. characters was yep. Daryl, his dog, and uh, Rick you know, Michonne. Know. Rick Michonne. Yeah. But she was gone. I mean, Maggie. and she was out of there because they had her off search and just, you know, Maggie. Maggie and Negan. I mean, who cares? Sorry, any fans out there. But I, for, for me, that was not interesting. So. No. I think what pulled me back in and gave me that flavor and essence of Walking Dead was the throwbacks they did, especially in this season finale. As you know, all the fighting and the struggles they went through. And then, honestly, I didn't even recognize Garbage Lady. What is her name? The <laughs> Jadis? Yes. yes. And... You know, I know yeah. I knew her, but I was like, how do I know her? Because they gave her a do and, and just made her look different. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. been a minute since I've seen the show. Yes. So, yep. uh, so then when it was a realization, I was like, garbage lady. I know who she is. <laughs> but I did enjoy the throwbacks that really brought me back the flavor of the show. You know, like, yeah, this is walking dead. Yeah, I got to tell you. I Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, please. Um, I saw this series as a walking dead redemption arc in the sense mm-hmm. of they just walked around in the woods forever. And it yeah. it that they just didn't I mean have characters that came on that had the same level of charisma as Rick and Michonne. Mm-hmm. It just didn't happen. And mm-hmm. I checked out. I'm not blaming anybody. And I would argue, and maybe it, it was Gimple that really I would argue did damage to the show. But I'll be damned if he's not a writer, executive producer on this show, right? And so I think anybody who had a chance to be in this arc got a chance at ending the walking dead properly. Mm-hmm. You know, I just felt like that final scene was yeah. the end. And yes. well, the beginning or the well, beginning, they like, well, said you can do anything from that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and that would be a perfect ending. And, you know, exactly. Mm-hmm. Is that this could be, in other words, at the end of the Rick and Marone, Rick and Michonne story, in terms of everything they went through all those other seasons. So um, I give Gimple his due, man, because he did it. Do you think he had as much to do with it as <laughs> Denai Guerrero <laughs> or any of the other writers that probably don't get named? Yeah, um, probably not. You know, I would I mean, see everything is- that, that fell short for me seemed Gimple-esque and mm. the other stuff. Like, I've been mean, hearing Denai Guerrero talking about like she and Andy basically fall into their Rick and Michonne sandbox and it's natural. They got the charisma, they got the part. And there's a reason that Andrew Lincoln's mom was shipping him and Michonne well before it happened in the show. (laughs) So, and I mean, she's a playwright, so I, you know, and they're also executive producers on this. Yes. Yes. So I thought that, you know, was pretty clear that, this was their vision of mm-hmm. what they wanted their characters to do. I don't know how tightly scripted it was before, but it just seems natural when they're sort of on on there. I thought, you know, I I like I, what you're saying there, Will, because it shows all this stuff we end up seeing on the screen. Executive producer, exec. There's a whole world of lawyers behind the scenes that negotiated who gets what, who negotiated how much yeah. impact those actors had on the script. Did it have to be approved mm-hmm. by them? I suspect it did. I suspect that Andrew Link, uh, the, the, the Rick and Michonne characters said, we, we won't do this unless we get final approval of the script because we've got a legacy mm-hmm. to make good and. Yeah, yeah. yeah, these are the characters that we brought to life. We want to yep. tell that story. And I, I agree. I think that's what happened to to get them back. Because mm. I don't think that Andrew Lincoln, he was done. <laughs> I don't think he was going to uh-huh. come back to yeah. some bullshit. Excuse yeah, they were child. suffering. Yeah. And I mean, and honestly, anyone, I feel like if people who can't see that over the 10 years, 11 years of this show, that it kind of fell off. The stories fell off. They weren't having the characters grow in a real way that that character would grow. They were having the character do things way outside of what the character would normally do. And then Uh you get rid of key characters. Carl, hello. You know, then what's the motive? What's the motivation for people to stay there? And then Rick leaves, yep. Michonne leaves, everybody's gone. Maggie's over here. You got dumb, dumb ass Negan trying to be <laughs> redeemed. He's not going to be redeemed. And then he has nope. him buddying up with Maggie on that other show. Yeah. Makes no sense to me. 
So I was skeptical and I kept saying, I'm not going to ever get off the couch. And then I saw an interview with them saying it's back. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to come back too. <laughs> it was instant to back. Rick and Michelle. That first episode with Rick was awesome. It was, and, yes. and his acting was yeah. off the hook. He yes. looked old. He looked worn. Mm -hmm. He, you know, when he's, Outside you know, we got to sit there and in 35 minutes believe that it's been years and he's actually going to try to stay with these guys. But I believed it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's some acting. That's some writing. Good for them because they needed a bit of redemption, right? Um, yes. I think mm -hmm. for all the work they did before. Mm -hmm. And we needed that romance between them that we didn't Straight get to up. see before. <laughs> so, yeah, they got together eventually, but we missed all of the love and the romance and the buildup and the sex scenes, all of it. We missed all of that. We needed all of that, and I'm glad they put that into this season, too. Yeah, to baby, me real. too. Me too. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Don't me just too. show us kissing and then laying no. in the bed the next day. We want to see some no. moving and bumping and grinding, yes. don't we? No. Right. Exactly. Just, we, we yeah, do. just like you do I mean, anything else. So I'm Because we see all kinds of that stuff in relationships that aren't yes. nearly as intense and authentic. Right, right. And this, I mean, yes, of course, show real love. I mean, one of the best scenes I had – back in the show was when the two of them shortly after they sort of got together when uh when somebody came into their room and they both jumped out of bed basically naked with their mm. ready to yes, kill whoever yes. it was mm -hmm. like, yeah. like that like seemed to sum up their relationship passionate yeah but kill you in a heartbeat if they needed to mm -hmm. oh. and that kind of gave they kind of gave the world a new t-shirt line uh mm -hmm. this is a shit we do Right. That was yes. just a great line because, yes. yes, they're sitting there loving on each other with a hatchet and a sword, <laughs> you know, and, but that's what it takes to survive. And this is the shit we do. I just love it. We do. I want that shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. We need to make one, right? <laughs> well, that was probably also Jadis' sort of best line when she's talking about you two, like, together. Like, we don't know what's getting up. We can't... Yeah. determine what's going to happen because anything could happen y'all could do anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like that i liked when she said that and when they said that at the end it's just mm -hmm. powerful they're a powerful couple they live through a lot Very of people powerful. they live through now, a lot of space and right it, yeah i'm, I'm digging what you're saying because and michelle love had to is really, a struggle man yeah and michelle had to really get rick back to that point where he believed it because he wasn't yep. believing it at first he was still in that, oh, I have to protect, I have to protect. Forgetting he that he doesn't down. have to protect. He doesn't have to protect Michonne. Right. She's not the one that has to be protected. So, but nope. he forgot all that because it's been so long. Yeah. You know. I, mean, I did like the fact that they got rid of his hand because that was an important part of the comics. Mm -hmm. Is that he lost his hand, right? So I'm, I'm glad they did that. That's just yeah. Tolkien and Kirkman, right? Mm -hmm. And it, I think nice also touch. outlined how uh, how out of himself he was to do that. Oh yeah, like oh, he yeah. had no concept yep. that that was not going to ever work because you'd have passed out halfway, <laughs> getting away from the butt. Like he he should have reasoned that through, but he was so desperate yep. for any way to get out that mm. he did it. So I, I liked how that kind of outlined how off. Like his heart knew he had to get back, but his brain. <laughs> wasn't quite working. <laughs> no. Right. Right. You know, there's, I gotta another, go. there's another thing I really like about the fact that they let this Southern man be a hero. Mm -hmm. In other words, in our culture right now, Southern white men aren't particularly portrayed as heroes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not his heroism wasn't because he was a Southern guy, a Southern white guy. But nonetheless, that's the way Kirkman wrote him. That's the way they shot him for years. And that's the way... He fell in love with Michonne and she fell in love with him. And um I I, I thought that was kind of brave to be honest, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, that was a non starter. Like, I'm no. sorry about that. No, I'm no I was thinking that No, go ahead. I I feel like that's one thing that I complained about too, because I could you could see that they didn't want to have them together, or someone didn't. Hmm. I feel like someone did not want to have them. You mean get like together. now or earlier in the earlier season, in the in the, in the yeah. show? I feel well. like because there were so many other 
stories I got put in front of and it was like another love interest was there. And mm. I feel like there was some people that didn't want to see that, but then they, you know, at some point you have to listen to your fans and you have to see, I mean, like, listen to where the story is going. Like it was organically right. going that way. And yeah. they were just a family and their chemistry was great. Yep. And you couldn't deny that they could take on anything. Like Jada says later, yep. they could have, they could do anything together. They've escaped so many situations, which I do love that they highlighted that in this final episode with all of the flashbacks. Yeah. And as I was watching those flashes, I was like, oh my gosh, look at how young they were. Look at how <laughs> I forgot about that. Like they got they got yes. out of this huge horde. Or, oh, I forgot yes. about that, where he had to bite that dude's throat out. Or yes. you mm -hmm. know, when remember when they were at Terminus and he they were about to get oh my uh, god blooded at that those troughs. Unbelievable. And I forgot about that too. So I all still can't are, believe that made it on TV. Okay. That's, that whole episode was actually on TV. Yes. Oh my God. I thought, okay, y'all yes. show whatever you want now because they're killing people at troughs with bats and knives. I mean, Jesus. Man. I mean, and it kind of helped me go back and appreciate all of the great story they have told over the years. Oh, yeah. You know, just I mean, in it, this finale. I think that's a testament. And we talked about it earlier to the chemistry and the acting chops of, totally. of you know, Lincoln and Denai. The fact that that's one of the deviations from the comics that is better than the comics because yes. Rick and Michelle never get together in the comics. Right. But they do in the show and it makes perfect sense. Like it's chemistry you can't sort of yes. deny. Like, mm -hmm. and maybe that was part of, part of the reason that it didn't work because they're like, they made changes to the script, but they didn't never went there until a show. And that was one of the top things. And like I said, it just opened up incredible opportunities for the characters in the show and things you just don't. And you don't ever see that on TV. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you never see that pairing. You just. You yeah. Know. So guess who Rick hooked up with in the comic? I, I think I was. Tricol Andrea. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she was his love interest in Alexandria, if I remember the comic correctly. Uh, and yeah. Michonne wasn't in the picture at all in that way. And um, whoever and like made the writing choice. Yeah. She was like in her early 20s choice. or Great. something like that. Um, you know, it's like um, it's like when they started making the TV show Supernatural and they didn't know how long it was going to last, but they were shocked by the chemistry between the two brothers, the actors. Mm -hmm. And once they saw that these actors had this chemistry, they just wrote a damn show around them for 15 years, right? And I think whenever we saw Rick and Michonne on, on the screen, well, to be even by themselves, yeah, there was no doubt. We were in emotionally, completely when they were on the screen mm -hmm. and... Okay, when you got that, you just write it. You just make that work, right? Because that's a backbone of the show. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So this episode in particular, they have their plan. They're going to go back to the CRM and destroy it. Rick's going to get his briefing. Michonne's going to go and figure out where Jadis's notes or her dossier was. And then we're going to meet up and do what they do. Were any of you surprised by the briefing, the echelon briefing with Major General B Locke Beal? <laughs> well, to be honest, I thought that was the weakest plot, the weakest point in the entire plot, that this one guy is going to persuade all these people to kill two-thirds of remaining humans on the North North American continent. I, I thought, really? And y'all believed him in joint? Uh, I... I thought, okay, that's a stretch, but I don't care because I love everything else that's going on. Yeah. But I thought that was the weakest part of the whole plot, to be honest. I did wonder if he was doing that to try to get Rick to say where his group was and then kill them. And was he going to kill, like, mm. was he really bringing Rick in or was he just saying that to see if he could get the last mm. bit of info so they knew where to go to take him out? Oh. Don't know, but I did wonder if that was where he was going with it. And if Rick says, well, you know, we got this group in Alexandria. We send in the helicopters and take everybody really, out. Do you really think he didn't know about Alexandria? 
Like after all of mm. this, do they, how how do they not know Alexandria is there? And this is what kind of scared me when he was talking through, and he's like, "We have, <laughs> we have people infiltrated in <laughs> uh, all over the country in all these little pockets of groups, <laughs> and they're just waiting for the signal." <laughs> and I was thinking, Shh, they could have somebody in Alexandria. I found out that there's a Commonwealth that's really where people are too, so they could have people there. So. Their kids could be in a place where it's been infiltrated. So that did kind of concern me at first. And then I was like, oh, okay. He, he did. Well, here's the thing, man. There's no internet. So these True. kids aren't going to listen to people that aren't feeding them. So the people that are feeding them are the local folk. So this idea that hum, somehow these kids are going to grow up there and then five, ten years later freak out on the people they're with. They, or they said they were going to evacuate them. Maybe that was the point. Maybe they were just there. Reporting back, I. So here's for me. I didn't need all that. I just mm. wanted to see Rick and Michonne save the world, get back to the kids, love each other, and I'm fine. But yeah, the 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 whole, the whole we're gonna destroy two thirds of remaining North American kind is okay, dude. Whatever. Well, there was build up to that. They kept talking about it. Well, you're gonna at some point you're gonna get to hear the plan. You're gonna get to hear the plan. Well, I was thinking it was a good big plan, and I didn't feel like this was. <laughs> it was very anticlimactic. I was like, yeah. "Okay, oh, so we just had to, we had to finish the show." So, yeah, I'm going to kill most of the people on Earth. Well, what did Rick do? He said, "Here's what I think of your plan." <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> just it was it. anticlimactic because yeah. as soon as Thorn heard it, she was like converted. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's like, oh, Rick, as soon as you hear this, what was that episode three or two, four yeah, or something yeah. like that? As soon as you hear this, you're going to know. We, you're gonna, there's we're nothing gonna that can get all, in the man. way. I'm all in now. So so Dana can't mess this up. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with her because I can't have this blowback on me because this <laughs> echelon briefing really taught me something. And even mm -hmm. Jada said there's a 500 year plan back when she was trying to talk to him uh, when they were in the city. And that was the plan. Okay, so that's a pretty maybe old like, plan. <laughs> maybe it's like Goodfellas. And he thinks he's going in the room to be a made man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going to cut him out. Uh, maybe they got a different briefing. Maybe they got a briefing that's really going to bring him in. I mean, but George again, Allen, maybe it's just the weak pivot point of the show. It was. The only yeah, thing I, I was feeling about that ending was the idea of picking the kids out of all these different locations. And... They probably, you know, I, I imagined it was like a a militant, like we're going to raise these kids up the way we want them to and yeah. just absolutely control them to breed, right? To, and everybody would go back probably to the old days where they had yeah. manual labor and then housewife duties. Yeah. I just, I, that's the only thing I got out of it. Otherwise, I just thought it was. So like I got this certain... plan to save humanity, Okay. And the first thing we got to do, y'all, is kill two thirds of us. <laughs> and after we kill two thirds of us, we're gonna take all their stuff, and we're gonna be okay. I mean, that's old. That's just an old idea. We're gonna invade <laughs> their land, take their stuff, and we're gonna be okay, right? It's well, okay, he was dude. saying that the, he was gonna take all the resources because yeah, he was. They only yeah. have fourteen yeah. years of resources available for mm -hmm. these people, but. I didn't understand that because all the way in Portland, they're not using the same resources you're using. No. You're not traveling all the way over there to ship supplies. I don't know. So I was kind of confused <laughs> by that logic. But And then also, they're only taking 10% of the kids. 10% because they said, we're, we're, we've gotten certain kids that we're going to pick and evacuate. And we're not going to let them know what's going on. We're just going to say they're they're okay. It's overrun. Yeah, they're going to have blackout okay. windows. Yeah, right. right. But why just ten percent? I guess they calculated how many top ten percent. You're going yeah. with the top, smartest, best. What I mean, whatever their whatever. sort of criteria is. Right. The thought of this brings me back to that show that nobody wants to watch, The Handmaid's Tale. Mm, snap. Oh, that is a great show. Right. Well, no. we, it's a great well, show. we have this. Uh -oh. radicals that take over a certain area and then they're just uh -oh. going to keep purging other people's stuff, bringing it in and everything. Kind of yep. reminded me of that a little bit. Mm. 
Uh, I mean, the answer is yes. When people start getting so smart about what's going to happen 10 years from now, you need to be careful because we don't live in a computer program. We live in a crazy open world. And you think, you know what I'm going to be in 10 years? Guess again, because yeah. when, the more you tell me what I'm going to be in 10 years, the more I'm not going to be that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, so, yeah, the Handmaid's Tale reference is actually pretty on target. These people that think that, uh, yeah, I'm going to think myself through the future and I'm right mm -hmm. and I'm going to kill everybody to make it. So we just heard that way too many times, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Way too many times. <laughs> so I thought we were supposed to think this Echelon Briefing dude was going to be brilliant, right? And he makes the whole thing about, well, you know, I had to sacrifice, what was it? I had to sacrifice Pittsburgh yeah. so I could get Philly or one of those, yeah. something yeah. like that. It's like, they, what an arrogant-ass perspective. I mean, I'll show And he wants to take martial law. Like, he wants to get rid of the government so the military can rule and they can do, run it his way. I, okay. I really dig Rick's argument. You're not giving these people a choice. Who yeah. are you to not give these people the choice? choice. And if you if you don't, you know, yeah, people that and are. And who's to say after they did this <laughs> in a couple <laughs> years, he goes, "Oh, now we're down to twenty years of resources, yeah. so we're going to have to kill half the people in this city that right. we're protecting." <laughs> so, we can't feed them. <laughs> we can't feed them. You know, we've we've now At some we've point done, that graph is going to yeah. Well, it's like another sci-fi movie, Soylent Green. Yeah. Um, oh, go back. Well, you gotta. There are people. You know, when you oh run out of God. stuff, you know, there's yeah. just people left. You know? I was such a kid when I watched that. It was one of the scariest shows. I mean, and then you find out at the end that they're like making everybody into crackers. <laughs> 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 what is going I'm... on here? I was like, eight. <laughs> I was like eight years old when I saw that movie. Hey, man, the sick truth is that people can be food. We don't want it's a there's a moral yeah. taboo against cannibalism, ca cannibalism, but yo, oh my uh, god, no. yeah, and may it be taboo, <laughs> yes, terminus, terminus, <laughs> man, tainted oh, man. meat, Bob, and this tainted meat, yeah, oh my gosh, that's still the funniest scene yes. ever. I love Very that so much, meat. absolutely, tainted meat. Scene. that was yes. so good, it was so I love good. it. So That's what thing that I was like, Beal, the other thing that I thought was a miss, because they kept focusing on the fact that Beal could like read someone's intention by looking at their face or something. And I'm mm. thinking the whole time he's doing this lecture about what's going to happen. I'm like, you can't see Rick is looking crazy. <laughs> like Rick obviously was looking at you like, dude, I'm just waiting for a minute. I'm just waiting for my opening to you get know you. You are so on target. And I thought that was the brilliance of the acting because he looked like that anytime he was talking to anybody That's, but Michonne. That is true. Nobody could read the dude. And mm. they I I can't believe the quality of the acting he brought out for these six episodes. I was really blown away. This was for me the perfect ending. It's not the end, but you know, I mm -hmm. thought, okay, this is a good way to round it out. And he knows who he is. He knows how long it's been. <laughs> and that look, you couldn't read it. I would not play poker with that man at that point. I mean, we could read me. it. <laughs> Bill couldn't read it because I was already like, Bill, if you knew what we knew, yeah, you yeah. would not have all that stuff laid out right there on the. <laughs> now, I know he only has one good hand. Yeah. But yeah. he's still quick on the uh, draw. Gee, Mr. Wither, let me put my sword on the table. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and. Beal says all the time, we've never had anyone like you, but yes. doesn't do any backup planning, doesn't have anybody, you know, Waiting. watching on the side yes. or, you know, somebody else that's got the briefing that's on board. Now, that's a good thing that you brought up. I was going to ask y'all. So what do you think about that? Because they've been saying all along, we don't handle A's. We don't deal with A's. We just want B's. Obviously, Rick's an A, and they should all know it at this point. We've never had anyone like you that I've given this briefing to. Does that mean that he was behind Okafor's plan to populate a couple of A or have a couple of A's take over? Because he keeps telling Rick, you could be the next leader. We've never had anyone so. like you that we've given this briefing to. 
No, I, I think Okafor was more of a cipher, and I think he he basically had Beal snowed and had his yeah. own plan. And I don't think Beal was in on any of it. And I think when Okafor, I think Thorne was looking for the better angle. And when Okafor was dead and Beal gave her the briefing, she thought that was the new thing to latch on to. Mm. That's my take on, on her character. I got, yeah, I'm with you on that. I thought Okafor was actually a bit Rick-like. And I think that's why he right. resonated with Rick. Yeah. And I think that's why he saw, okay, so my take, and I'm not even claiming to be correct, but Okafor was bringing in Rick because Okafor had the same, you can't tell people what to do vibe. Mm -hmm. And uh, felt that he was going to actually knew the brief. He knew he was going to destroy two thirds of humanity and said, Rick, you need to come help me take these guys out. We need to be the military force in charge so we can find a way to keep these three places together. Now, I can't tell you that's right. And I'm sure someone on, you know, Reddit or something's got me all wrong, but that was the took that was the take I and by the way, I loved that Okafor character. Dude spoke very slowly and yeah. I loved the sexy voice. <laughs> yeah. But I I just love the way they gave these little cameo characters some real oh. heft, right? They were good. Mm -hmm. And even Jay, now I'm sorry, y'all, but even she got to do more in these episodes than she did in the previous show because they gave her more space to work with, right? Mm -hmm. A bigger problem. And I I, I enjoyed her uh, her time on screen. I mean, that haircut, yo, I can't, what? But it was awful. Girl. Why did they have no, her I, doing that hair like that? Ooh. I think it's just part of the character. No, I thought I thought she was better here than she was uh, yeah. in the original Agreed. show, and Agreed. I thought she was good at needling Rick and keeping that whole. I yes. got to do this because she could have my whole family killed and everybody I care about that I think Brilliant. is still alive. And that what that's the I think that was gave the real tension. Yep. Mm -hmm. Although I kept thinking. Her having this dossier or whatever file was more dangerous than Rick would be. Because anyone could have found that in her stuff. And in a wire would have found book. out. Right. <laughs> and found out that she lied about him being a bee. Yep. And he because right. he wasn't gonna say nothing. So I, I, right. I at first I was like, why does she keep harping on this? Because he's not gonna reveal it to anybody. If they yeah, can't yeah. see it in him already, then they're not going to see it. So it's going to come from either her losing that damn dossier or someone finding the dossier more than if he runs off. He's not going to come back and tell him. Anyway, I thought her little argument about I'm going to if you run, I'm going to kill your whole family yeah. was a little bit weak because I was like, well, really, you're the one that's making it more obvious that you lied than him. <laughs> you know that's true. that's true yes it is a, um, no. but she doesn't have to say he's a bee she just has to say where his family is and that she thinks that it's dangerous and that they should probably take them out and she's dead so she's not going to face any rep repercussions for it that's true she also knows that is the way to get to rick mm -hmm. so let me ask it's, you about that and that's because... the way to and that's the way to split him in the show mm. Let me, let me ask because you guys they are about split that. for a part of it. Yeah. Because in the AB nomenclature, she misidentifies Rick initially, right? She calls him a B. I think she knows he's an A at that moment. Oh, yes, definitely. And so mm -hmm. she's kind of Okafor ish. And here's the contradiction of what's his name? What's the, what's the colonel guy who stupidly put the Lord, I'm, what's it, Bean? Beal, Beer, what's his name? Beal. 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 Uh -huh. Th this idea that somehow, um, well, I got to be careful because it's not true. Um, he is the one guy. There's one person that can save a group, right? And th this idea that there's just one person, well, I guess everything he did was consistent with that idea. And he saw Rick as the next guy who could save the group, even though they told their people going out, get rid of all the A's. So they're saying they said we're going to get rid of all the people that might be the one, but yet they keep the ones alive, you know, right. and and that that I don't know I'm not making sense, but I but it's consistent with that idea. It's the contradiction in that idea that you need a savior in a group 
to keep the group going. So um, we're going to kill all of them, and then we get to make the choice as to who's the right one. I guess that's all consistent, consistently narcissistic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think so, too, because he says you let you tried to leave four times and you came yeah. back. You were gone. We thought you were dead. You didn't have to come back and you still came back. And mm-hmm. so then he's like, that must be a sign that he's the one or something. <laughs> and then Rick goes all Jackie Chan on him, right? <laughs> Oh, I love that scene. I was hollering because I was like, I didn't see it coming. I knew something was coming because Rick had that look on his face. He got a a lot of use out of that steel arm. Yes. You know what? When he was Mm -hmm. hit, he knew he was hit. Oh, my God. Oh. Yes. (laughs) After he killed um, Beal and had Mm. him in that crate and then went into the (laughs) elevator with that other guy. And I was like, okay, we already know this is not going to end well. But then as yep. he started beating that dude, yep. beating the shit out of him, boom, 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 boom. I truly yeah. appreciate the way they displayed that, not because I dig on gore, but because Rick experienced and was in exactly what was at stake. It wasn't mm-hmm. just the elevator. It was him. It was Michonne. It was their kids. It was everything in the world. So he just said, "Uh uh-uh, there's no restraint. This has to end as quickly as I can. (laughs) And he just made it happen. And, uh, I, I, you know, I give the writers and everyone credit. I, this, a lot of this made sense, except the idea we're going to kill two thirds of all living humans to save every human. But if you're going to say that kind of stuff, well, then you messed around and found out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And even Michonne, like, I don't know that we've seen Michonne kill someone like that. In mm. the when she was in Jadis's room, <clears throat> and mm. that woman uh, walked in. Oh yes, yes. And she just basically killed her. Like, yep. hey, I cannot let her call the alarm. I got other stuff to do. Yep. Even though she's not <laughs> really trying yep. to kill. Well, I guess she would have tried to kill her. Mm-hmm. She's like, I gotta take her out, and just was like. And then when she was already dead, I think the woman was already dead. She then she kicked her. <laughs> she was really I was like, mad. She was there to make sure. <laughs> she had to be on pins and needles, being in that in her quarters, mm. looking for that note. She had to have been just wound up. So whoever would have came through that door, she'd have, she'd have t- took care of them. Yeah. Well, even when she was cutting the or tearing up the note, she was so wound uh, up, mm-hmm. upset about it. Probably like. Well, you know, when your eyes roll back in your head. Right. And you're doing that violence. We just don't understand that enough. You know, we don't understand what happens to people enough when they're killing someone because they're trying to defend their family. They're just a different thing Mm. than they are when they're walking down the street saying hi. And, you know, when you mess around enough and you put someone in that state and you find out. Yeah, we're surprised, (laughs) but we because we don't understand it well enough. It's mm-hmm. also years in the making. Like she's yep. been on the road for years. Yeah. She doesn't get to see her family. She's finally broken through. And this is the one, you know, this is I the am tired. This is the moment. To go. Yeah. This needs to end. <laughs> and I'm not and when I do this, I'm still not done. I got a yeah, lot exactly. more to do. This is like for Rick, I'm 54 yes. on my list. Yes. <laughs> and I was oh. happy for Rick that he found out he had a son. Oh he didn't God. even that know he had awesome. a son. No, he that didn't. was the best. His reaction, was good. and yeah, at the end, seeing them with Carl's head on, and then they're oh, kind of yeah. adjusted it a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> now, what did, it? You see what I did there, right? <laughs> I went from all this violence and boom, boom, boom over yeah, there. Oh, that to was the kids. So cute. <laughs> that, that was cute. Though. What are you trying to say, sister? <laughs> Just, that would, we like to obsess on violence as ever. No. <laughs> I'm with you. I want to say, just, I, I like that scene too, but that, and I know they didn't want to probably change kids out, but that little RJ, mm. they could have mm-hmm. got a different, a different kid. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I was like, and all he's, you're going to have him say, oh, you're the brave man. I'm like, really? That's the first thing you're going to say to your dad. Sure. So I, I, just, I thought, yeah, I thought I, that, took me I must out. have thought a lot about how that moment would go. I dug the idea of, I'm not sure Rick would have hung back because he knew his daughter. Yeah, but 
I mean, I thought I mean, he was admiring the moment, and he knows that. Yeah, Michonne's the character. Yeah, Michonne is yeah. the primary. She's the one that the kids have known for years and yeah, years. Fair enough. Yeah, and all the development because he he left. It was eight years since he'd seen his yeah. daughter and had never seen his son. So, yep, that made sort of sense to me. No, um, it was it was very grueling. That yeah. made sense, but this that being the first thing that RJ says to him did not make sense to me. Mm. It seemed kind of cliche. Yeah. Since she had been calling him and saying, I can't find the brave man, right? She'd already mm. introduced us to the title Brave Man. So mm. to have the kids his first words, I'd have been like, You my daddy? You know? Yeah. Would have been mm. asking a question <laughs> versus yeah, saying, enough. You're the brave man. Something yeah. else. I don't know. I didn't like it, but I did like the reunion. I do think that they would have, RJ would have been shy because he'd never met this man before. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Rick yes, would have been a little yes. bit shy because he's probably trying to process it's not Carl, but he probably sees Carl in mm-hmm. him because mm-hmm. of the hat and the, uh-huh. I don't know. I, I figured yeah, that maybe. was more real. Yeah, that but, was a nice throwback of the hat. Yeah. Oh, and I was bawling my eyes out the whole time. So I don't know that I. St- saw the screen much. I I loved it. And the fact that I loved it made it clear to me, if I'm going to be a Walking Dead fan, I needed this show, right? Mm-hmm. Because it didn't end well. It just yeah. didn't end well. And, and you don't want to do that. And I know, I suspect that, you know, the actors said, we don't want to end this way. We we want to end with a legacy, so you could watch these, you know, live, uh, Walking Dead up to when the bridge scene, and then you, watch this and be fine. Did you remember at one point they were talking about doing movies and all they that, were. and yeah. before COVID, and you yeah. know, so I think this is just, you know, they settled on this. I think they had a budget of about ninety million dollars for the six episodes. It was like oh, thirteen point wow. seven per episode on average. Um. So they definitely, you know, got their money's worth. And oh yeah. So do you think uh, um, this is where the story is going to be over for Rashon and the family, or do you think with all of the other spinoffs? Wow. Because we have heard that the spinoffs are supposed to all converge at some point, but do you think this is the end of us seeing Rick and Michonne and the kids? Is Daryl um, alive? Yeah. Yeah, according he's got to his own his, show, doesn't according, he? Yeah, he has his own show, and he's in France. Oh, then we're going to have to hook back up, right? Bring him in, go back to the homes, get get everything situated, and then see what a colony they've become, and then see their experiences and how can they grow that, what they go through, and bring in some people who they've known in the past that mm. are you know, still around. That'd be cool. I think... Um... Rick and Michonne, the actors, are going to have to make a choice, and that is dollar signs versus legacy. And Mm -hmm. because I think, I really do think this was a redemption narrative for their work. Mm -hmm. If they were to walk away from it now, they could, and they made, as as Connie mentioned early, showing all those little, you know, montages from the past completely validated and contextualized everything they were doing in this show. It all felt like it had been years ago to me when I was seeing them, right? Yeah. You're done. You've told the story. And and if you're going to go back, it's like, dare I say, doing those Hobbit movies after The Lord of the Rings, right? I mean, there's money to be made. Uh, but it, what do you want most? Do you want a legacy that people can respect and remember? Or are you going to risk that going for... I mean, they might be able to do something else that's really, really good. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied. I don't feel I need more. But if they, you know, I probably would watch it if they did more. But I mean, clearly they have the chemistry and the acting chops and the ability to story tell that if there is a story that they want to tell and that they buy off on, they can totally come back and bring it. I mean... They sort of wrapped up this chapter, and so yep. they're kind of free to go do kind of anything at this point, you know. You know, and they'll maybe... be on the Comic Con circuit for the next three years, mm-hmm. at least because of this this series. This series, right? yeah. I was. Um, we haven't. It's not been released yet. But in our last <laughs> um, podcast, we were talking about 
how would the story end? It's not going to end with just Rick and Michonne getting back together. It'd have to be with the kids too. So I kept thinking, there's no way they're going to be able to wrap all this up, get back to the kids in the finale. I was wrong, obviously. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. But so it makes me now think, because I kept thinking, oh, there's definitely going to have to be another season so we can Mm -hmm. get back to the kids, get back and see Daryl and Carol and everybody. But now that we've gotten back to the reunion with the kids, I feel like that is a good stopping point to where maybe they don't won't want to continue and have the full reunion with all of the other characters. From what I understand, Daryl's in France. He's protecting a kid who's was born from a mom who had gotten bit. And so Mm. he's, he's not recognized by walkers when he walks through them. And so some people CRM is looking for him or trying to snatch him up to test him. And Daryl's trying to protect him. Anyway, that's what I've heard. The story is on Daryl's show. And then I heard Carol's uh, show. I guess the second season of Daryl's show is really going to be the book of Carol, where I guess Mm. she's going to look for Daryl. So there's still going to be some other walking Mm. dead universe stories coming out, but how is, I mean, are we going to just have them? Are we going to have Rick and Michonne come back? That's what I really want to know. And I don't think I've seen anything yet that says they're coming back for another season. So this finale. Well, was- I like that point you make because we watch shows for characters. Mm-hmm. We don't watch shows to have someone read a series of events and a history. You know, we watch shows to see characters. We want to be in their lives and dig on them. And Rick and Michonne, and I'm sorry, but Carol and Daryl. Yeah, we're probably, you know, Maggie's there, but for me, those four Mm, mm -hmm. were it, plus Carl, which they foolishly got rid of. Uh, But um, those are why I'm watching the story. And that's obvious because I didn't watch it when they weren't the story anymore. And so for me, if they were going to ever try to end the Walking Dead story, it would be for me. I always thought they would get all the kids to the coast somewhere and get them on some aircraft carrier or something that's off the coast that's not infected, and all the adults die trying to get them there. Ooh. That's the way I always thought the Walking Dead <laughs> story of all those adults would end. Mm-hmm. Um, Because you're waiting for those character stories to end, not for the zombie apocalypse to end, right? Right. Um, So they can, I, they'll do what they want. I, all I can say is right now, I'm feeling very satisfied. I haven't watched anything since the bridge blew up, and I'm fine. I don't need to go back and watch the rest. Mm. Oh yeah, that's where I left. That's when the bridge blew up. I haven't been back. (laughs) I haven't been back since. I did watch after that, but I haven't been back since I stopped, which is midway through 10. How are you going to get it back without a bridge, man? What the hell? Right. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't know. I thought they, the Daryl and Carol thing burnt out. um, And whatever Mm. that season was where she blew up the cave for sort of senseless reason, because Daryl was going, or, had an almost relationship with the woman uh you're reminding me cindy or what was her name she was like that was the last when that thing sort of blew up that was the last interesting sort of relationship at all in that show and so that's not and you were off the couch and it just seemed i'd watch a lot of pointless episodes (laughs) that season (laughs) yeah um but i thought that was pretty interesting and uh you know so if they came up with an an idea that was good, it's probably worth doing. Those are two actors that could pull it off as leads. Yeah. I thought Daryl was good, but he wasn't the lead. No, like, he could be a lead in an episode, but you know. Yeah, I agree. Um, I feel like they need the ensemble to make they all to make them yeah. all mm-hmm. like they could all be leaders in an ensemble, mm-hmm. but having their own show, I not enough interest for me to. Yeah. Keep watching, and they still well, have too like many friends. characters. Everybody played off each other in Friends, but look, Joey went and tried it out on his own. Um, yeah. That didn't last, no. right? Yeah, that's sometimes a good point. it takes a lot of main people to make a whole show. Mm-hmm. And and you know, a lot for me, it's a a lot of shout out to uh, the show up to the bridge. 
showing what happens to someone who's in charge. I, I, I love the fact that Rick just gets clogged up, right? He just, he doesn't, he changes and it's harder for him to make decisions and he's, it's, but it's easier for him to be violent and he's increasingly sick and tired of this life. And yeah. I'm not speaking from personal experience at all, but when you've been in charge of something for a while, you can't help but these small scale petty things creeping into you. You can't help but the world getting into how you look at it. And it's just, it's, it's harder and harder to hope, right? It's harder and harder to, okay, here's what we're going to do now. Here's what we're going to do now. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate it that they showed how long-term leadership can wear someone down and make him not trust, make him be, I, I just, and then when he came back and did this acting job in these six episodes, I thought, good for you. No one's ever going to give you an Emmy for this because they don't get it because we mm -hmm. don't understand long-term leadership. But um, I, I I mean, they both nailed it. Um, I have to admit, I just think he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and I like that idea too, because, you can see it with when they do, when him and Michonne do get back together. I think it was episode. Four. I got someone sneaking up on my frame. I hope that's oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> that's I hope that's okay. She of course, of course. Okay. All right. I mean, one thing when, I think would be interesting, and this could be the, the sort of the pivot point for the next show, would be they want to figure out. You know, and this is answering some of the questions. How many of the zombies are alive? How many, like, where can mm. they wipe them out? Now that they've got helicopters and some of the other stuff that they teamed up and went out to wipe them off. You know, different zombie books and stuff <laughs> have things where over time they basically just sort of wither away. The cold gets them. Like, they could come up with something like that, and you could have a team up, and that could bring some of the people back together. You could answer questions about the Commonwealth. There could be other groups out there in small areas, different parts of the world. Um, I mean, I've read different sort of books like that where one is basically a group out of North Korea were marauding around, and it was a different sort of zombie thing. But are you talking yeah. about World War Z? Um, that's not. But you're absolutely right. That's one of the things. The problems of this show is we just got stuck in the same damn forest mm -hmm. for ten years. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know what I loved about this show is suddenly we're out in the world, yo. There's a whole world. There are other survivors, and yeah. um, and that know, matters. Yeah. And they know how to get there. So it would be interesting yeah. to do that if they got involved in that part of it. Um, because you know mm -hmm. they talk about these huge, massive hordes and you know redirect them, but. What if you're like, okay, we're at this stage, the zombies are adapting or whatever, but we need to take them out, you know, so we can just clean it up. Yep. And that could be an interesting show and you bring everybody yeah. back. Yep. And you could also have a mass to... wipeout. A lot of these people could come back and they're gone. They alluded to a lot of that too in this season with the different walkers that we saw, the ones that had the mm -hmm. calcified the heads. Cement. Yeah, yeah, and they but they never went anywhere with it. No, really, you kind Not of just yet. left it, and so and then the experiments. Like, what did we find out? I feel like that's. I do know in one of the spinoffs from someone that told me before, the experimentation is a lot more prevalent in the story and what they're finding mm. out about things. So maybe they're going to continue that story in those one of those shows. But that would be interesting to kind of get mm -hmm. an idea. Like instead of killing up all the people. Yep. With all these gas bombs you're throwing, try to kill up all these walkers, you know? Yeah. So, Dude, that season was three. Some hard labor. That little spear thing they used, it had the thing in it, and the graphics were, I was, I, oh, I kept, the graphics were I, great. I kept saying, don't look, you know? Don't look. I was, <laughs> and they were ripping them open. I thought that, that was. Yeah. That's wild. a good gym workout, man. You don't need to go to the gym. Oh, my God. Mm, that just was, and they, on the line. They did say, um, in another, in which I, I, I don't know. I guess they assumed everybody had watched all the previous spinoffs because mm. I really wish they would have just added a couple of lines every once in a while to say, this is why we're doing this. Like why yep. we're leading these walkers to us and killing them is they're using them to fuel the city or to run the electricity yep. or whatever, which apparently is what they're doing in other spinoff shows. But they didn't really mm. bring that up in this one. 
to mm-hmm. understand why they have these people all no. day just killing up walkers that they're leading to the city mm-hmm. gates. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I think that well, they, they should have shown us how the sausage is made. Yes, if, you know if they're gonna if they're gonna show us killing killing well, and you're using them as fuel, show it. What, what, that would what have been that so interesting. Like? Yeah, 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 exactly. But they only had six episodes, and they had to get to it. Yeah. So I get it. I thought it was going to be a longer series, and they could have done more stuff like that. Like I yeah. thought, you know, it was going to be eight episodes, eight or ten. Mm. But it was. I was surprised when I looked and saw it was six. Really. Yeah. And all yeah. I'm seeing and, right now is the factory in Soylent Green, where you saw the little crackers <laughs> come out. <laughs> You're home, heated by zombie zinc. Dude, or uh, uh, me. Exactly. they're feeding people walkers. <laughs> oh. Walker biscuits. What's Walker that? Walker biscuits. <laughs> What's your flavor? What's well, the then, train story? Another thing they never did address is like, okay, you have this city that's walled off. You know, you're not letting anyone into the city. Mm. But did we forget that as soon as a real person dies, they turn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was actually you... not mentioned at all in this show. At you're all. absolutely right. At all. Not this series. Yeah. yeah. So then you have this gigantic city. Apparently, the military <laughs> doesn't run there. Who's watching out for these? The you know, people, people are going to die. It's just going to happen. Natural mm-hmm. causes or whatever. They ship them off to the biscuit factory. After. But then they would chomp up a couple more people, wouldn't they? Yeah. So they I, you know, know. Yep. There well, was so much they could have told, and just like when well, the bomb went off, and all of a sudden they find themselves surrounded by everybody they wanted to kill. Right, that was that was tight. Okay, that was, that was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought that was. But fun. wait a minute. Now Uh-oh. I did have something to say about that bomb. Now <laughs> okay, I thought the okay. plan that was a really cool idea. To have the walkers come through, run out the wire, and then all the grenades uh, run off. But how the hell did Thorne survive that blast? First of all, well, they needed him. To, they needed that character. They, I, <laughs> I'm yeah. messing around. <laughs> Just say I guess they have they points sur- to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't she like behind a wall or something? I guess. Like, but the, out of building, all she those came around people, the corner. yeah, she survived. Right. Yeah. I guess they had to have that showdown with her and Michonne, which was good. It was good. It was. But, she, but I don't know. I did feel it was a little quick to get yep. to that resolution because they obviously tried to fit it all into this episode. Mm-hmm. Instead of I, I would agree. One. It was a bit rushed. Like mm-hmm. I said, I think if you'd had eight, you could have paced it out a bit more, had a yeah. bit more of how it's actually working. And why do we have to resolve anything with Thorn? Just let her piss her let her be unresolved where she is. We don't know. And then you keep that character around for later if you want. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, I don't know. Yeah. I think I think you're both right. They trying to make the personal drama wrapped and, up. I mean, here's much. a better one. Thorn dies, comes towards Michonne, she takes skits on up. Yeah. Bye bye, Thorn. Yeah, yeah. Yes. See, I like Thorne, and I don't believe she. I just, um, I, I can't believe I, that she believed the echelon briefing and was persuaded like they portrayed it. I, I mean, they, that's the character, and that's fine. I thought she would have said, "Hey, look, let's get out of here." Not fought him. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And going back to the the sort of city thing you were talking about, Sister K, with people dying in the middle of the city, I would think uh-huh. that they would have something like a Fitbit, and so when somebody Ooh. was expiring, they would know, and there would be a group that would come and get them, oh, maybe that's... like Sandmen <laughs> from Logan's Run, because you know someone's going. Oh my god! So can... Off to the biscuit factory. <laughs> that's a good idea, <laughs> right? So that would make sense. Some more sci-fi. That would make sense because that city was, I guess, pretty well populated. So how are they controlling that? We didn't get to see it. Um, I thought those condo apartments where the helicopter flew in and crashed, and then they were able to hook up in a couple of different ones. They were luxurious. For this show, that's the most luxurious space I'd ever see. Very modern, very kept together. Yeah. That was anything but the forest, man. <laughs> they had, to, they, the had to, they spent a lot of time arguing though. They wasted a lot of time <laughs> arguing. <laughs> That's love, baby. That's love, right? <laughs> love between killers. Yes. Keeping the tension real. 
But she we was did just have... being a strong woman and her man was beat up and she needed to be able to keep telling him what was important, you yep. know, and to reassure him, we'll make this. Just come on. Who are you? Yeah. Keep right. in the game, baby. Let's go. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. So... He had drank all that Kool-Aid, didn't he? <laughs> Yes, he did, baby. <laughs> oh, I think, a few times. I think she, well, I will say anything else, but Please. he had help drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> he was drinking that Kool-Aid. Mm. All right. Well, we did have a couple of um, emails, so let me get to those. The first one is from Shalita. Hey, Shalita. Hey, Shalita. Hey, girl. Her subject line is, um, blow all that shit up, a.k.a. them folks was crazy, A.F., AKA, we are so not getting a second season, but that's okay because it ended perfectly. No, oh, William. Yeah. Hey, Sister K and fam, here is my feedback for the finale. So, am I the only one who thinks Bill's plan was insane? Nah, because we all felt like, because none insane. of that shit made Brilliant. sense. Like, that was literally insane and psychotic. Yep. Just had to put that out there. Okay, that's it. Thanks for the lovely time, Sister K. This has been a wonderful trip back into the Walking Dead world. Until next time, Shalita from Philly. P.S. I knew it was about to be on when Rick put his murder face on. And Michonne is pregnant, right? Because they stayed screwing each other. <laughs> Thank you, Shalita. Shalita that that fly helped him drink the Kool-Aid. As always. As always. I mean, she really could yeah. be. She she really could yeah. be. I appreciate you mentioning the guy was um the the plan was insane. Right. Here's what and, it is. Uh, Beal was high on his own supply. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he was. It was like but the idea that everybody else away. was yeah, I think that I would appreciate it a little more work to make it clear to us that Rick and Okafor really were of the same stripe. Right, that mm. Okafor was like, this guy's crazy too. But Rick hadn't gotten the briefing yet, you know. So maybe he was waiting, and then he'd say, "Brother, we gotta take him out." <laughs> yeah, I think Will is right too. If we would have had more episodes, maybe they would have made that, yeah, more solid. But because yeah, they're trying to fit it off, yeah. two more, even two more episodes. The briefing would have been more, more better. Like the briefing would have made a little bit more sense. Yeah. You can hope. I mean, you can hope. <laughs> yeah, you would hope. Thank you, Shalita. And Thank our you, second, nice, Shalita. our second feedback is from Sarah, and it is a voicemail. So let me play that now. And Sarah, y'all haven't heard it yet, but she was on last week's episode. That'll be out soon. <laughs> hey, sisters, it's Sarah from the UK with my feedback for the finale of The Ones Who Live. Um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, I think it wrapped up well. I don't know how all you feel about it, though I'm sure I'll have heard it through your podcast episode um, and will likely be agreeing. I felt it tied everything up. I was glad to see the kids at the end. I was glad to see Rick and Michonne get back. Um, so yeah, I was on board for this one. Uh, intrigued to hear your thoughts on General Beale in his little cuckoo land, spouting off some rubbish about swords that give life or something yeah. else, <laughs> whilst blithely unaware of Rick's killer eyes developing right. until, quite frankly, it was too late. In the immortal words of Sister Kay, get him, Rick, get him! Loved it. <laughs> Thanks for the podcast this season. Really enjoyed listening, and I'll speak to you all soon. Ah, oh, thank you, Sarah. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks. That was awesome. <laughs> and I think we have consensus on you know, Bill's character, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that echelon briefing. You know, that's a Rorschach test because you could put that out there and there, may, there won't be people there will be people in the world who agree with that mess. Oh, that's a scary. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. that, that you're gonna find people. Oh, of course you gotta kill two thirds of everyone to get mm -hmm. to the right group. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why you wanted bees. <laughs> yeah that well that's just... exactly why you want to be you're absolutely right but they were all but they were still again that's this is about <clears throat> jane's character why is she mislabeling rick what because, why is she okay, doing that okay so she's doing that because rick is her is her ticket into that place because she remember she had to kill everybody in yeah. her bad haircut land 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Garbageville, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Rick is her ticket in. I've got to be. That's oh, okay. how she's getting in. So uh, she's, you know, and, you know, that's how she's going to do it. Yeah. And, and that's and, why she also approaches him early to say, hey, look, yeah. if you don't play ball, they'll go and kill everybody that you yep. love and care about. Yeah. Because he knows that, you know, she loves Michonne and, you know, all that. So she, she's playing that card on him. Only yeah. one she's got, but she's yeah. playing it. It made me think of too. Um, she, um, she obviously, and Rick obviously never ever said Michonne's name to anyone but the guy who was drawing the pictures on the phones. Because mm -hmm. when um, that's right, what's her name? Thorn confronted them out of the tent before everything blew up, and she's like, "Oh, Rick and whatever Dana." She never did say her mm. real name. So I'm like, no. so Rick never really did speak about any of them. Only Jadis knew. And I guess mm -hmm. the guy who drew the pictures knew their real mm. names mm. or knew like what they look like or anything. Mm. I don't know. Just that just reminded yep. me for some reason about that. So that whole time, no one would have ever known Michonne. But that whole time, Rick was carrying around five pounds. You remember well, when he just took a bunch of them and dumped them out of his... Just he had them, them hidden in his couch cushions. Remember with all those files? Yeah. He had... Oh, yeah, that's right. I think that was he actually the... did decide to stay. Yeah. Right, he was giving up at that yep. point. He just said, I'm not going to make it out. So. No. I think that was one of the flashbacks that I didn't quite understand at first because it had been so long and it was probably in another show. But when mm. in one of the times that he tried to escape... He had a bag full of the phones and I guess his shoes. And that's when that's where Michonne found his boots in that one phone that had mm -hmm. Judas picture on it. Mm. Yeah. That he had left. I thought I that guess. was one of the I thought that was a really nice touch. That was one of the better, more subtle ones that they had in the show. Mm hmm I think that was episode three or four when they were kind of showing mm -hmm. a flashback of the one time yeah. when that helicopter came and he was like on that water front. Mm -hmm. and um, picking him up after one of his escape number three two three or whatever mm -hmm. so it made me kind of i don't know this this season or this uh finale when thorn says their names i'm like oh yeah she doesn't know her real name apparently he never said it to anybody except for that random dude because he Don't called her name. name out really quick when he yep. when she came up to the the booth anyway Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Shalita, for that feedback, and thank awesome. all of y'all for sticking with us this season of The Ones Who Live. Mm. I just... <laughs> we see... <laughs> what the hell fuck is that? I'm trying to... My cat is invading us. How come I don't have the you cat tail button? The camera keeps getting closer and closer. Like, dude, I love that's it. Tough. That's oh, a perfect way to end our podcast. <laughs> trying to pull up Melissa and get up in here, man. <laughs> oh, thank y'all so much for giving up your evening to uh, record with me. Before we leave, I would love for you to tell everyone where they could find you if they'd like to see what you're doing or hear more of your opinions about anything TV related. Will, would we start with you? Um, I don't have anything right now. I, uh, as my day job, I help teach um, tuition free tech boot camps in Seattle. I work for a group called Priscolis and uh, we're national across the country and we have like in-city locations as well as online. So if anybody thinks that's something they're interested or knows somebody, then Uh And one of the things we're going to do is have an AI series and we're going to put that out publicly. So mm. that should start next month. Oh, wow. So that's it's not awesome. out yet, but will be. So that's amazing. Well, that Great. sounds like a fantastic public service you guys yeah, are doing. Very that. good service. Yeah, so not some past twenty five thousand uh, people that have been through our program. Oh, good for you, oh, man! Oh, wow! So. Very cool. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Zombie Scotty. Well, 
Um, if you type if you type Dark Loops Productions into the Google machine, you'll see what I'm up to. If you're in the Houston area, I'll be at Comic Palooza at the end of May. Um, doing a cop pass, cop podcast. Uh, what you love, Comic Palooza cosplayers. Kanye and I, Kanye and I actually did a, a What You Love podcast together at Fan Expo Nolens, and they deleted the recording. Man. <gasps> No! Tragic wow, news. Tragic news. It but, was a great uh, time, man. I don't need, it need was, a copy. It was We posted a little people. snippet on Instagram. <laughs> uh, if you type in Dark Loops Productions, it'll take it to Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, and yeah, just uh, having fun with uh, pop culture. And, and I'm indebted to the sisters for showing me how to have fun with it. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right. And Sister Connie. You know, I'm not certain how much I need to be found, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. You know, <laughs> you see me at a con once in a while with my brother, and uh, mm. that's that's about it. Unless you live in Tulsa, hit me up. I'd love to talk to you about these shows. It'd be great to get our own little watch show going on, you know? Yes, yes. But I do appreciate you bringing me on today. I appreciate you so much. It's been a blast. Oh, great. I'm glad you had fun. That's no, been great. Yeah. Again, thank you so much to my guest host. Thank you to everyone out in the podcast sphere. Don't know what's coming next for The Walking Dead, um, but unless it's got Rick and Michonne, I probably won't be back. So this is probably going to be <laughs> farewell forever on the least this show. We have a I lot. I second of, that. Hello. We have a lot of stuff that we podcast. If you want to check out any of our other shows, go to sisterspeakproductions.com and you'll get links to everything. We're on YouTube. We have a Patreon page. We have a Facebook group, which is very fun. And we have a lot of other Sister Speak family members there. We could chat with each other, talk about all things TV and life. Um, and uh, we have a lot of great fun. So join us over there at sisterspeakproductions.com. All right, y'all. That is it for now. I am Sister K. I'm Will from Seatown. I'm Zombie Scotty. Connie from Tulsa. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. 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 Bye.